aceto acetic ester synthesis. A huge, all of these steps are called that? Yeah, this whole type of process is, is called. Is it like the, the process of hydrolysis and decarboxylate? This whole thing, thing together. In general, or only when it's like long? Yeah. Yeah, well, let's review what makes it that. All right, first of all, why is this called ester? Well, because we started with an ester. Mm -hmm. Now, why is it called a um, acetic ester? Because you're forming a carboxylic acid. In well, I think this is based on the starting materials, not uh, the product. Um, acet means two carbons. Well, here we have two carbons. So this is an acetic ester in the sense that it has a two carbon L group. So it's called an acetic ester because it's an ester with a two carbon L group. Remember that acet almost always means two carbons. Do you remember, what's the one time that acet means three carbons? Um, uh, acetone. Acetone. Well, I think that's the other acet because here we have a three carbon ketone, so to speak. That's what the aceto stands for. I think the aceto stands for acetone, because this group over here looks like acetone. And then the acetic ester stands for this group, because here we have the acetic ester. So this name all just refers to the starting material. So this is when you start with the starting material, and you, um, and you add carbon chains by making enolates, and then you do a hydrolysis and a decarboxylation, this whole thing together. Uh, presumably, this would, it would still be called this whether you added one carbon chain or two. We could have only added one carbon chain and done the, then done the decarboxylation. So um, it's could we have, yeah, sorry? So it's alkylation, hydrolysis, and decarboxylation yeah. are With this starting material, yeah. The combination of alkylation followed by ester hydrolysis and finally decarboxylation allows ethyl acetoacetate to be converted ultimately into methyl ketones. This strategy is called the acetoacetic ester synthesis. Acetoacetate. Hmm. I might have given the wrong explanation for the name there. Actually, maybe what it's yeah, coming it's from is those two carbons and those two carbons, right? Yeah, I think it's maybe these two carbons and these two. Yeah, actually, I think, I think it's called um, this aceto is referring to these two carbons, and this acid is referring to these two carbons. And they didn't even mention these two carbons so over the, here. The first aceto is those two carbons on the left. You think then so? Then the acetic ester is those, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The and the S. So like if you were to number it one, two, three, four yeah. from the left, yeah. one and two would be the aceto, three and four would be the acetic. Right. And then O C H two C H three would be ester. Right. I, I I guess it doesn't really this doesn't really have to be an ethyl group, because it's just right. gonna leave anyway. So yeah, it doesn't really matter how many carbons there are over here. So I think uh, again you were right and I think I was probably wrong. So yeah, the, the first asset probably means these two carbons, and then the second asset probably means these two carbons. And it probably, it probably was no need to start with two carbons over here. This could be any uh, L group. I, I think you're right about that. Okay. And by the way, what this produced is what's called a uh, methyl ketone. Why is it called a methyl ketone? Well, it's a ketone, and we've got a methyl over here. This is called a methyl ketone in the common system. That wouldn't be IUPAC, but this is called a methyl ketone because we've got the methyl group here in the ketone. And then we can kind of put whatever we want over here because this is the alpha carbon. Again, I really think it's helpful to keep labeling that alpha carbon. So what we've made here is a substituted methyl, ke methyl ketone where we can put some substituents on this ketone over here. 